priests are one of the most versatile classes in the game. They're everything from actual light priests to shadow priests to witch doctors and even priestesses of Elu. Currently, a few are one of the main and key characters in the entire series and will be playing a major role in what is to come in the Shadowlands and beyond, shaping World of Warcraft throughout the years. So let's take a look at what are the most powerful priests in the lore. Brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends, one of the largest mobile RPGs. With over 500 champions, skill trees and equipment, there are literally endless ways you can build your teams and strategize. I've played with a few champions thus far, aside from the Orc, I've also used the Dark Elf Kale, a pretty good farmer starter champion with a decent AoE and poison abilities, making him great for arenas and clan bosses. I'd say he is the strongest of the starter champions and you can try him out yourself just by getting the game. Right now, Raid got the biggest update ever, the Doom Tower with 120 floors and 12 different bosses, so it's never been a better time to start. They're giving away a super special champion, Bolvark, which is gonna help you a lot in the new update. 14 new champions are also released for the holidays alongside a host of new events. If you wanna get a great head start, check out my link, get a free void champion, an XP booster, 50 gems, energy refills and an ancient shard as well as Bolvark. All the rewards will be here in the inbox for the next 30 days. Check out my link in the description below. Number 10. Moira Moira Bronzebeard was born as a princess to her father Magni, but was ambushed and kidnapped by the Dark Iron Clan. Surprisingly, she fell in love with Dagran Torsen, the Emperor, and when her father sent a rescue mission for her, she refused to return and instead fought against the dwarves. Now, as the Dark Irons crumbled after all the catastrophes that hit them, she attempted to take Iron Forge and march on it as Magni was turning to a crystal, but she was repelled by the Alliance forces. However, under Varian's suggestion, the Council of Three Hammers was formed and the Dark Iron Dwarves rejoined the Dwarven clans and Moira became one of the rulers and an important figure of the alliance. Her rise to prominence as a priest was in Legion as she joined the Conclave and later helped the Dark Iron Dwarves get into the Fourth War. Honestly, not much is known about her as a priest. She is one of the rare Shadow Priests lore figures and as Moira was not just a member of the Conclave but was one of the secondary leaders, that definitely means she is one of the strongest priests on Azeroth. With her connection to the dark magics of the Dark Iron Dwarves and the Church of the Holy Light through the Alliance and her father, it makes for quite a powerful combination. Number 9. Sally Vitemane Originally, Sally was a priestess of light that slowly but surely turned towards madness. She lost her family to the Plague of Undeath and was forced to destroy them herself, which sparked an intense desire in her to cleanse the undead. Originally, this was noble, as the Scarlet Monastery was the bastion of priesthood, but soon enough, they turned fanatical and Sally, as one of their leaders, became more and more extreme by the day. They no longer trusted anyone and just started cleansing more innocents than the actual undead. Many times Scarlet Monastery was invaded and many times Priestess White Mane survived. The reason she survived and even kept Scarlet Crusade a thing for so long was due to her immense resurrection powers. The only way we actually managed to make her death permanent was through Lillian Voss. Later on, Sally was resurrected as a death knight and currently is one. While she was young and not the most experienced of the priests, she was one of the most influential, fanatical, dedicated and powerful. It was her prowess as a priestess and as a leader that led Bolvar to resurrect her and turn her into one of the new four horsemen. Number 8. Alonso's Foul Literally THE priest and the most influential one on all of Azeroth period, long ago he was the Archbishop of the Light and even Uther was his apprentice. It was Alonso's Foul that essentially created the Human Paladin Order, the Silver Hand, and his role was critical in the Orcish invasions. At an unknown point in time after these wars, around when Anduin was just a small child, he died. During the Scourge invasion of Lordaeron, he was resurrected as an undead, but later on joined the Forsaken. The role of Alonsus would be the most prominent during Legion as he helped us defeat the Burning Legion, join the Conclave and once again became the Archbishop 
this time as an undead. Now, I wouldn't say that Alonsus was a powerhouse himself, but his importance cannot be stated enough. The spiritual leader of the humans created the paladins and apprenticed the most influential and powerful human paladins of all time. Number 7. Benedictus Long ago, Benedictus was a student of Alonso's Fowl and pretty much his right hand. He participated in the First and the Second War and with the death of his mentor, he became the Archbishop of the Church of the Holy Light. It was during the Scourge invasion that his life just changed forever. He started doubting the light after seeing what happened to Artus and Tyrannus and the innocent people of Lordran. His doubt spread as he no longer worshipped the light, the light that could abandon their servants to the undead hordes. Despite being an archbishop, he was not much of a believer and around the time of the Burning Crusade, the Twilight Hammer started spreading and they just fed his doubts. When Cataclysm came around, he started slowly turning, but ultimately overtook the leadership role of the Twilight Hammer, becoming known as the Twilight Father and later on the Twilight Prophet. He saw the Void as an alternative to the tyrannical light and wanted to remake the universe in what he saw as the natural state of things. Benedictus helped establish and make the cult quite dominant by kidnapping dragons as just one of his actions. He was hell-bent on destroying Troll as he envisioned the orc destroying Destroying his massive Deathwing, which of course Benedictus was right about, as that is exactly what happened. And as he failed, he wanted to personally assassinate him, but he was ultimately defeated. Of course, the Archbishop went crazy, but with a new void and light lore like 10 years later, maybe he wasn't so insane after all. Number 6 Kalia Menethil. The daughter of Terranus Menethil and the older sister to Prince Artus, the Lich King. She was thought to have been lost forever as the Scourge invaded Lordran, but she in fact survived in a trench and managed to escape and live a life in exile only to return to the public eye during the Burning Legion invasion. During her exile, she became a priest, ultimately becoming one of the most important ones on all of Azeroth. She partook in the Gathering, an event where the Forsaken would reunite with the Alliance, but as Kelia attempted to just straight out start the rebellion and get the undead to defect the Alliance, Sylvanas Windrunner flew into the field and personally murdered her. This is where Kelia came to prominence as a priest as her corpse did not decompose and with the guidance of Anaru, she became the first ever light undead. Now, there have been undead wielding the light in the past, we have seen that before, but Kelia was quite unique as a forsaken touched by Anaru. Since then, she participated in the Battle for Azeroth, later on joined the Horde and became one of the leaders of the Forsaken. Now, in Shadowlands, she participated in the Scourge invasion and ventured to search for Bolvar in Oribos, where she currently is. Power-wise, we don't really know how strong she really is, but as most priests, she is an important figure instead of just a fighter. We know that Kelly Menethil has a unique and strong connection to the light, which lets her avoid death, which just by itself makes her incredible. Incredibly powerful. Number 5. Vol'jin. I wasn't really sure where to put Vol'jin. He's neither a priest nor a hunter, but is in fact a shadow hunter. However, due to how weak classes are in World of Warcraft, I decided to place him on this list, even though Vol'jin is only loosely a priest, sort of like a shadow priest. Hunter. Regardless, Vol'jin is the son of the Fabled Sengen that fell against Naga forces and thus his son took over the leadership of the Dark Spirit tribe. For years he was a crucial advisor to Troll and one of the most influential figures of the entire horde. However, as Garrosh took over, Vol'jin became the leader of the rebellion, ultimately defeating Hellscream and becoming the war chief himself. Unfortunately, Vol'jin's reign was short-lived as he was on the front lines at the Battle of the Broken Shore and was defeated by the overwhelming number of demonic forces. As he died, he was ultimately manipulated by Muezala, the law of death, and ultimately the jailer himself in order to turn Sylvanas into the war chief, which in the end orchestrated the current events of the Shadowlands. Despite his death, he never truly died as he was in fact still around as a spirit during the fourth war in the battle for Azeroth. Now, I know you might say how was he powerful as he was defeated by a legion foot soldier, but keep in mind this was an overwhelming army and much like Varian, he fought 
fought off many of them until an accidental strike happened. Now, we have seen Vol'jin fight on many occasions, from his experience with the monks in Pandaria to the rebellion against Garrosh, and it is safe to say that Vol'jin was one of the most powerful trolls of all time, both as a fighter and as a leader. As I mentioned, Vol'jin is very loose a priest, but I added him to this list nonetheless because I felt like calling him just a hunter wouldn't do him justice due to his incredible connection with Taloa. Number 4. Talanji the daughter of the king of the Zandalari Empire Rastakhan and until recently the princess of the said empire. However, as her father died, she became the queen, the leader of the Zandalari, a member of the Horde Council and one of the most important figures of the entire faction. Much like Anduin, she is only around 18 years old, but even at that age, she is one of the most powerful priests of all of Azeroth. Troll priests, unlike light priests, are completely different as honestly they just bunched up in the game in the same class. Generally, these troll priests worship the Loa, get the powers of the Loa, and they're more witch doctors than servants of the light. Talanji previously served the Loa Rezan, and we've seen the crazy destructive power as she just like obliterated half the Lion's navy, and as her father died, she was bound to Bon Samdi, which granted her even crazier powers. Now, as the leader of the oldest troll tribe, the most influential and now a crucial part of the Horde, she isn't just a regular priest serving a Loa, but a queen representing her people, which grants her a lot more power than a Loa would grant just a regular priest. We don't know much about the Lanji in the Shadowlands, but as Bon Samdi is here, and he has his own pocket dimension in Aldenweald and we've seen what he did with Moezala, I'm guessing the Lanji will be quite prominent. Number 3. Anduin Vryn Anduin Lane Vryn, the son of the fallen King Varian, the High King of the Alliance and the commander of all Alliance forces. Despite being only around 20 years old in Shadowlands, he's probably the most experienced 20 year old ever. From a young age he trained with weapons, but as he was gifted for the light and his potential was known for years as one of the greatest priests of all time. As his father fell on the broken shore, he became a king, a very young one, but so far he managed to maintain a very capable leadership. He participated and led all the conflicts thus far and was kidnapped most recently and kept in the maw by the jail. Now, Anduin is thought to possibly be the greatest priest, even though he might even be a paladin at this point, but let's just call him a servant of the light despite his young age. We have seen Anduin essentially mass resurrect his army at the battle for Lordaeron, turning the tide of battle, and now he even managed to defy the jailer's immense power with his light connection that was so strong that it could reach him within the maw. He was taught by Velen himself, the most ancient priest that we know, who saw incredible potential in him, saying that he will be a great king leading the forces of the light and darkness, which honestly with the way things are lining up with the void might even mean that he could play a great role in the future expansion. Thus far, just by the fact that he could use the powers of the light to battle against the jailer within his domain means that Anduin is one of the most powerful priests, not just on Azeroth, but in the entire known universe. Number 2. Velen Long ago, Velen was a mage and one of the three leaders of Argus and thought to have been the wisest and the most powerful of the three. As Sergeras broke the hierarchy, he escaped together with the Draenei 13,000 years ago and went from planet to planet hiding from the Legion. In the meantime, he turned into a priest, connected with the Naru and the Light, became a prophet with the gift of sight and visions into the future. As the Draenei went from planet to planet, they reached Nanor, and as the orcs invaded them there, they ultimately settled on Azeroth only a few years ago. Now, since then, Velen participated in literally everything that happened and led his people from near extermination to becoming valuable members of the Alliance, and Velen himself was a key factor in the defeat of Kil'jaeden and most recently the imprisonment of Sargeras. He literally was one of the leaders that orchestrated that entire ordeal, the return to Argus and the defeat of the corrupted world soul. Now, Velen is probably the oldest and the most experienced priest that we know and that we have ever known. Before he was a priest, he was one of the finest mages in the universe and then with his direct contact with the light and the Naru, he became a prophet and a priest. I would say he is a powerhouse, but not in the literal sense as in destruction, even though he can definitely deal some damage, but he is more of a leader and a guiding figure, as is usually the role of priests. And lastly, number 1. Tyrande Whisperwind 
the High Priestess of Loon, one of the oldest mortals and for a long time an immortal on Azeroth and currently one of the key characters in the Shadow. Tirana was a priestess and the most devoted follower of the Moon Goddess Saloon. At the same time, she was the general of the Sentinels and the leader of the Night Elves, participating in everything from the War of the Ancients to the Third War and the most recent Burning Legion invasion. We have seen Tiranda fight on a million different occasions, using her moon powers as a priestess, hiding from enemies, destroying foes from demons to undead. She was one of the rare priests that is actually a powerhouse and incredibly potent in terms of destruction. Now, most recently, she became a night warrior, the dark incarnation of a loon, and became even more powerful, albeit I say she turned more into a hunter than a priest at this point. However, as in game and both classes are different, I don't really think there is that much of a distinction she still is a priestess and a follower of the loon, just with crazy enhanced powers. We saw how she just shattered Nathan Osbightcaller, one of the most powerful hunters on all of Azeroth, and how she was dealing with enemies left and right. As she is now following the dark side of the moon and she went into the Shadowlands, I expect her role to be incredibly important, especially with the hints that the loon could be a first one or that she could play some very important role, and who better to represent her than one of her most loyal priestesses. Due to her night warrior form and powers, I'd say Tiranda is the most powerful priest, not just on all of Azeroth, but possibly one of the most powerful ones in the entire universe. Thank you for watching! Check out Top 10 Most Powerful Hunters by clicking on the screen, and also check out the Runs Academy for videos on real world history and science. See you next time!